Have you guys seen this? Oh, no. All right, I think this might be helpful. Um, uh, but basically, yeah, okay, so let's see. Really, I need to, oh, yeah, do you need a, yeah, you do. So we need, a, like, an IPython notebook, but um, basically it'll, um, yeah, they, they host, where is the example? Uh, I can't remember how I found it now. Um, but they'll basically host um, IPython notebooks f for you and then, like, up to 100 concurrent users at a time, which is pretty sweet. Um, so I wanted to, I think I added a, added an issue somewhere to get this, because this would be good um, as, like, a, an alternative to Gitter, because I don't think it requires, it doesn't require a sign-in, so people can just sort of, like, do stuff right away um, in their browser, which is always good. Um, so I was going to try to get that going. All right. Um, so, Ogden, I still need to do the PR on the chatbot. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll have feedback. I was, I was trying to do it yesterday, and then I, uh, I lost the tab. And then I, uh, and then I went on to something else. So, um, so I will get you feedback to that soon. Um, and what else? So what else has been going on with you? Uh, uh, like, uh, what's up with the shared config? Like the unifying config? Oh, yeah. Shared config. So... Uh, let's see. I think the last thing. Like I saw you pushed up something. Yeah. So. Uh, what is up with the shared config? I believe there's like one thing left to do. Yeah, because if that's uh, like that will get done soon, I can use that in uh, the distributor orchestrator when. So we can just pass the config from the primary you node know, to the secondary you node. Know. Um, wait, wait. What are what are you saying? We can uh, st uh, we can still do that like the existing way, but uh, we were going to change everything, right? Uh, like we were going to uh, add the class details to the exported object. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Configuration objects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um. Let's see. Where did, what happened with that? Um. Let's see. Like it's fine. I can still do it the existing way. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I don't think it's gonna affect the distributed orchestrator stuff. I mean, what unless you had? Did you have a way that it was going to? No, 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 like I was just uh, going to start that part, then I thought about this. Yeah, you were just wondering where it was at, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where did it go? Um, um, and I pushed some work in the distributor orchestrator, so like, if you can look at it and see if it's the right direction, I can continue on that. Okay, that's fine. So I did till currently, now like primary node starts, uh, sub node starts, they exchange operation, and instance name and like everyone signalizes. The next step is to, uh, the next step, the primary node will announce everyone to instantiate their operations and that's the next step. Okay. The open network. Okay. And so for the test that you have, um, for the test that you yeah, have... Uh, currently I'm manual. I wanted to ask that. Like, Sorry, you, you cut operates. out there. So you're, you're manually spinning up and down nats? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I want to know how to test this. Like I now have two client scripts and one server script. I okay. just run all three and look at the ops. Um so so okay, so let's see. Um, that's work started. just give you this I have it there's another similar project that I've showed you guys this before but I have this other one that I maintain and it's got a simulator um, and 
the simulator is probably going to be the way that we spin up the simulator for tests is probably going to be very similar to how you're going to uh, how you're going to um, spin up and down mats. Um, so let's see. Uh, let's see. Yeah. For testing. Um, so let's see. Where's permalink? Okay. So so this here's an example of spinning up and down a server uh, for testing. And then also, let's see. Sorry. That's a bad allergies this morning again. Um, let's see. So here, and this will also be sort of you can see where we use self simulator port. Um, but I think that's, I mean, I think that's really it. So you probably just need like this line. Um, this sort of paradigm might help. Um, so, and then basically, I mean, if you've got the NATS client library, this just does a, does a TCP connection. Um, and, and as soon as a TCP connection lands and, and gets a connect, it kills all the other TCP connections and then returns and says, okay, the server's alive. Um, and uh, so basically, it, basically it creates a staggered set of TCP connections and... Um, so it does like an let me let me see if we can I'll just show you guys exactly what it does. Um, uh, you are recording this, right? Huh? Uh, are you recording? No, I don't know about that. Um, uh, are you recording? Oh, am I recording? Uh, yes, I am. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. So yeah, stagger create connections. Um, create connection after, right? So basically it goes through and it's going to say, uh, you know, async IO. So you can use this wait call and you can say, um, when something like just return async IO wait usually waits for all of the coroutines to complete and then returns, you know, the set of, um, the set of them that have been completed and then the set of them that are still not completed. Um, and then, you know, the not completed ones are basically just it's never going to be there if, unless you set it to first completed or first exception um, and so if you set it to first completed then it's going to uh, it's going to give as soon as the first coroutine completes it's going to return and the rest are going to be in the pending set and so um, uh, let's see yeah so basically we go through and we create we we do this staggered connection creation sorry one second Okay. Um, we do this staggered connection creation, um, and so we. This is basically just a sleep, and then you do a connect, like a TCP connection. Um, and the reason why it's done this way is because um, within. So when you when you do this within a, a user space, the the whole idea is we want to make the test start as soon as the server starts, right? But not before the server is ready for connections, right? So, because when you start the sub-process, you, you need to start the sub-process and then you need to wait until that sub-process sub binds to a socket and then is ready to listen on that socket. And in some cases, like with the MySQL test and stuff, we need to wait until it's not only ready, not only bound to the socket, 
but um, uh, bound and ready, actually ready for my SQL connections, right? So in this case, the, with this simulator, as soon as it's ready for a TCP connection, it's ready for um, you know, you know, communication with the client. But with NATs, uh, quite likely it will have some more sophisticated setup, and maybe as soon as it's bound, it's not actually ready for connection or ready for connections. In which case, you're going to need something a little bit. You're basically going to want to try to do like initialize NAT client NATs client connections, um, like I, you know, whatever their initial create create connection method is sort of thing is that's what you're going to want to do here um uh but um but it might just be as simple as just copy this um because you're oh, and the other thing is that the port number that you choose um this is this is the only reason why we're choosing so you should always choose port zero if you want a port to be randomly assigned to a service because the kernel will then pick a unused port and give give that unused port to the service. This is not that way because the simulator is not written that way. You can't give it port zero. It thinks it's an invalid port. Um, so we just have to try to choose a random port within the range of usually randomly assigned ports and hope that it is free. Um, and so there's some code here that you can see of where it, it tries to, it, it tries again if that, uh, if it didn't work, I believe. Right, so actually maybe it doesn't even do that. Yeah, it might not even do that. Um, but if uh, the correct way to do this is to have NATS try to bind to port zero. Um, mm -hmm. And if that doesn't work, then you can use this same sort of hack where we just give it a port. Um, and the other thing is that NATS is probably going to need, I, I would assume it might need like a config file or something, like more than just command line options. I'm not sure, but if it does, then you're just going to, you know, create temp files and stuff. And uh, and tempters and spin it off. Yeah, so far you can just uh, like start uh, like for testing purposes you can just start the comments. So it's okay, just great. Like... Great, great. That's great. Yeah. So then the only thing is try to make it bind to port zero, and then you're going to need to figure out how do you get the port, right? Um, you're going to need to oh, know oh, what yeah. is the port, okay. right? And usually it'll be spit out in the log. Yeah, it, or something. it it outputs in yeah. It, it, there's a log. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what port it connected to? Um, in that case, I think that's one where okay. So this, okay, yeah. So it outputs the port. So you're gonna want to like, let's see, where is that? That is in our code base. So like I'll spin up the server, then I'll call the two clients into processes and check their outputs. Uh, is that that basic idea? Uh, yeah. You spin up the server. You read the output logs, you parse the port number, and then you do this, then you do, uh, now I moved, but then you do that, that try to connect until the connection is successful, because okay. it might be outputting that before okay. it's really ready. Um, okay. So, cause there's a bind call, and then there's a listen call, and the bind call is when you get the, the, the port number, and the listen call is actually when it's going to start accepting connections, and it may not be making that until later. Um, and like milli milliseconds will matter here because you're, you're going to try to connect, and it's going to be like I'm not ready, and we're going to have weird intermittent yeah, test uh, failures. Yeah, once it's ready, it's, uh, there's a log message like. Okay, so great. Ready to accept yeah, so, so you can also look for that. Yeah, um, and then the ne another example here, you know, you might just in this case that might be more of a. Uh, more of a thing where we go with the uh, MySQL source way of doing things uh, rather than just a raw connection. So, because that has um, that has an example of how this gets done. So, okay. Da, 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 da. The MySQL one's kind of crazy. Oh, the MySQL one's very crazy. Now I remember what the hell's going on here. We have to create SSL certs for it. Actually, you're going to need to do this too. Um, because you're not going to need to... Don't worry about this yet, but you are going to need to... You're going to need to do this. Um, 
because we have to whatever we do we have to support doing it over the secured over a secured version of, of what we're doing um, so let's see yeah okay so this this file is going to be useful because I believe let's see where does it do that um, Oh, does it do it in a reverse way? Let's see. Yeah, it may not. Ready? Okay, yes. So this is what you're looking for here. Um, and this is sort of, this is using the Docker way of starting it, but you're going to be using async IO and reading lines. So, and actually, I'm going to cut these out of here. That's not the way you're doing it. Um, so, this shows how to start a service with Docker and um, uh, read lines and return once the service is started. Um, another thing, oh shit, I don't have my phone, and that's where people might be trying to join the meeting from. Uh, sorry. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, so um, this shows how to start a service with Docker and read lines and return or and yield. So this is context manager yield once the service is started. Um, uh, let's see. You're going to need to use. Let's see. Okay. Sub process. They have a read line. Yeah, they have a read line. Okay, yeah, you're probably want to just going to use that read line method. Um, let's see. I believe there might be another example in here too, and if there is, that could be good. Oh yeah, this might be good. Um, so here's another example with read line. Yeah, I remember doing this for the Oh, yeah. Okay. So there's some more examples with read line in here. Um, 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 yeah, okay, so that's basically, I mean, once you do that, that allows me to sort of um, review it better, right? Because um, then, okay, okay. yeah, yeah. Right. Yes. Um, let's see. Okay, uh, and uh, then... There's one more thing which I wanted to ask. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, currently what's hap what happens is, uh, like, all the sub node starts and they wait for a connection, their contacts wait for a connection request from the primary node. Okay. But uh, what I wa really wanted to do was, uh, like, the sub node start with a list of operations, then whenever they get a message request from the primary node, they run up a context. But uh, I want, but I can't do that because the call method is not uh, async. So do you have any idea to do that? Wait, what method is not async? Uh, so what, what I thought was initially, whenever uh, we call, uh, uh, we call the subnode, like uh, we instantiate a subnode, uh, yeah. We listen, listen for uh, like, like the connection subject, and whenever we get a con connection subject, we spin up a context. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, Narcissa is right? 
but uh, so I can't put that in call. So like wait, I don't understand. I still don't understand. So can you explain it one more time? Yeah. Uh, so what I thought was when we in call this object, call the sub node object, uh, we'll start listening to the connection subject, and whenever we get a connection subject from a primary node, uh, the sub node will spin up a context. Yes. And that context will uh, deal with all messages related to the primary node context. So if there is another primary node context, it will spin uh, the request from that will spin up another sub node context. Okay. Uh, so uh, what I how like I envision doing this is when we start the object, we'll start listening uh, to this thing. And uh, yeah, the same thing. But I can't do that because uh, when we call call the object, like when we make an instance, uh, it uh, calls the under call method, right? And that calls the what method? Uh, the under call underscore underscore call underscore underscore. Uh, sorry, underscore underscore what? Call. C -A -L. Oh, call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, I still, I think, okay, so, I mean, my, so the way, I guess, I still don't really, it, it might just be a functional, okay, so it might just be a functional way of not understanding, so let me just fetch the branch and see what's going on here. So, let's see. Yeah, can you go to the uh, bottom of the file, the orchestrator.py in distributor? It's DFFML distributed orchestrator. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah, can it. In the bottom of the file. Yeah, so uh, now when we call, call the object, it returns the context, right? The NAT sub note, the last line. Yeah, okay, yeah, it returns the context, okay. Yeah, yeah. so uh, what I wanted to replace it with, and I'll wait uh, for the connection subject and the callback of that uh, subject. Uh, but you're saying this is an context. async? Yeah. Okay, so that's okay. so, so. The first thing that happens is that you have an A enter with the with the double context entry. You have an A enter on this object, and then you have a call, mm -hmm. and then you have an A enter immediately after the call. You have an A enter on this object here within the okay. within the context. So if you need okay. to do anything, then you would do put it in the A enter. Like if you need to do it after the call, you would put it in the A enter of this. Okay. That's that's asynchronous, um, but. Uh, one second here. Okay, so also. So, uh, what does, uh, can you repeat that order once more? Is it A ender of NAT sub node, then call of NAT sub node, then A ender of NAT sub node context? Right. So let's see. Um, it should be up here, and if it's not up here, we're going to change it. Um, Uh, yeah, only the ender of context, what it does is it connects to the NAT server, then calls the init node method. So it connects to the NAT server. So where do we connect to the NAT server? Uh, it's in NAT's node. There's a NAT's node object. NAT's node. Okay. NAT's node context. Let's see. Sweet. All right. So yeah. So. So here you connect to the NATS node server. Okay. So then they also. Yeah. Yeah. So, so continue. the first thing that I would say is you probably want to make this connection initially, right? You probably want to make this not in the context, but rather in the in the main object, right? And then you want to okay. create a new context. Every time, 
um, you want to create a new context every time there's going to be a new data flow, I would assume. Um, okay. Right, because from what I from what I heard from you, yes, you want yes. you you yeah it, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, okay. Yes, yes. so basically take you know let's see. So take this, put it here, right? And then when you initialize a context, um, so, so... Okay, then call the connection ob object from the parent. Yeah, so... Okay, yeah, that makes more sense. Yes. So, yeah, and this should have, like... So net, so net subnode, con let's just say context config, right? And... Um, so uh, operation what is context config well so this uh, because, one because uh, config a uh, nav sub node uh, supports a list of operation and the context uh, will be responsible for running a subset of that operation which the data flow wants okay so why why does it take a, a list of operations in the config uh, so uh, that's the operation supported by the sub node Okay. Say okay. the node supports running ABC, but the data flow only wants AB. Okay. Okay. So you've so made that. The you've made it the data flow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That that works. Yeah. So then I just want to also say that the, um, so. So. The default value for that should basically be that that thing that I sent you. Um, right, that basically is all the ones that th are installed on the node, right? Is that, are we mm -hmm. in agreement there? Okay. Okay. Um, so, and then let's see, so, context, uh, config, okay, so, okay. Um, Okay, and then this guy. Oops, primary node context, sub node context. So this one. This one would have something like, you know, the. It sounds like you need, I mean, you're, you're subscribing to. There, there's going to be a channel for the data flow, right? So this one's going to sit here. It's going to do a enter, and then okay. I guess also my confusion here comes from like how. So how is this thing getting used, right? Is it basically just sitting there in a for loop and then launching new ones whenever? Um, is it basically like for new data flow? In that sub yeah, sub uh, node. Uh, that, that's what I was uh, going to ask. Uh, yeah. Okay. That so was it's... what I was asking, like, uh, should I put it in the enter method or the call method? Yeah. So, so I should probably put it in a enter of sub uh, the sub node, uh, where it listens to connection requests from primary nodes, and whenever it gets a connection request, it spins up a context, right? Yeah. So it'll look. It'll. It's gonna look like something like this, right? So that sub node. Um, as node uh, async for data flow in uh, node dot data flows um, async with node as or let's see what is it. Um, Yeah, but the yeah. uh, sub node uh, won't know uh, any details of the data flow, right? So. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not really. Not not data flows, but so basically any time. Operations. Yeah. So, let's see. Yeah. Okay. So then you basically have something in here yeah, that's like. Maybe a, I like. Uh, like uh, like add whatever we discuss now, then I'll like write up step by step, or maybe it's some visual diagram so you can. Like, well, so so 
essentially you have this one that's waiting for for it makes the connection and then it sits here and it waits for you know new data flows right um to yes. come in right and when it gets a new data flow it needs to create a a context which is going to run that data flow right or run the operations yes. within that data flow right so then it so it creates a new context right so let's see init connection to nats server uh, wait for new data flows um, create create new context new node context to run operation to so create new node context which instantiates uh, operation instances and then runs them until data flow is um, gone. Uh, so, and then you have essentially like, yeah, so the other thing is that, um, let's see, you need something like this, async with context, live dot context, async. So you need this a exit stack because you're going to be entering the context within actually you need that here so all context let's see let's see let's see let's see okay you have okay now yeah you have two you have two threads two sort of things going on here you're going to have um you're going to have this thing, which basically waits for it. This is going to be similar to how the memory, the the main loop in the in the memory orchestrator works. Um, so you wait for new data flows, and then you launch them, uh, and then or and then you just like run them. Um, and actually, now that I'm thinking about this, um, let's see. So. Um, yeah so yeah um well i don't want to take too much time on this yeah we're taking i'm taking too much time yes. on this um like but I'll, yeah maybe i'll communicate like i'll write that thing and like send it to you so so let me just give you like you know, what's let's see. yeah so tail uh, well, this isn't really that helpful because it's not exactly what you need, but you you understand like where to go next, right? So. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. So, and then is there anything else on your end here? I mean, other than so, no, no, I'll no, no. I'll do this shared con the shared config should be close to done here. Um, I believe the last thing on the shared config was basically like the. Um, Oh, basically, the last thing on the shared config is I was going to go through, and make it so that when we initialize. Um, any config object it says is this thing a configurable and if it is let me instantiate you know if it's a dictionary if it's a dictionary that you know is config dict is true then i'm going to go and instantiate it um otherwise you know it, it otherwise it just leaves the object as it is that way anytime we pass anytime we create any config structure we're going to end up with a valid object in that thing um, yes. A valid loaded object. Um, so, John's uh, next step here there was to uh, create uh, to wrap init methods of uh, config objects so that we initializing them always results in uh, data of correct type being in a 
each property. All right, and then I think that that patch was going to be done. Um, so let's see. Um, uh, we talked about uh, let's see recording. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. So, all right. Okay. We didn't really follow that. I'm not following the agenda method. Damn it. All right. Okay. So, Saksham, um, what have you got going on? Yeah, I'm just setting up the VM instance, and I'm also running into the same error that uh, Hashim opened an issue for. I installed uh, Conda in the in, uh, on the cloud, and then did service dev install user, uh -huh. and because of just because of Dalfor Pi, everything just didn't get in. Uh, the dependencies were not installed. Oh yeah. Okay. So just wait a minute. Just at the end, Dalfor Pi uh, throws an error. Yeah. And, okay. Um. And I know. Let's see. Yeah, I was facing the issue. So what I did, I went to devs.sh and copied this the conda command and ran it separately. Then everything related to the dot uh, by was installed, and then I ran on the DFSML. Okay, so it's still okay. This is this is what I missed. It's still it looks like Hashim saying it's still throwing that error, um, even um, even. Uh, okay, I didn't realize that. Well, that's fucking goddamn it. Why? Okay. Um, That's really annoying. Um, okay, so let's just remove that then because that's ridiculous. Um, So model, this should fix it, right? Is this, is this correct? This is what we're talking about? Uh, I'm sorry, I missed what you changed. Okay. Uh, I think my screen didn't show that. All right, so basically we're going to comment this out so that it doesn't try to install it with pip. Okay. I guess that will fix that. All right. So, yeah. All right. Um yeah, okay. So and then I'm just setting up my environment and then I'll try to run things. I probably it will all run smoothly. Okay. As I'm seeing the as I'm seeing the download speed for everything while setting up it's very fast. All right, great. So let's see issue. Same issue. issue. Also, I think that we'll definitely need uh, CNN models because when Im uh, because right now I'm trying to classify images for first pre-processing the images uh, like the Im uh, there are like I think 1300 images I'm trying to pre-process yeah and that takes up a lot of time so if there are more than like 20,000 or 50,000 images that will take a lot of time yeah so. CNN will just reduce that time uh, by a lot, and I think we will need a uh, CNNs. 
Yeah, well, so, I mean, CNN's not going to reduce the pre-processing time, right? Or Like, there are features, there are, in, uh, when we do, uh, when we use CNN's uh, neural networks, there are features uh, for pre-processing uh, inside there, too. Okay, yes, very yes. That is true. Yeah. Okay. That's just what I, that's what I was trying to get at here. It's it's not. It's if we so our yeah, but our pre-processing like yeah. So the pre-processing that we do is is yeah yeah. So if it if if the if the neural network itself can can has has uh what the yeah the convolutions that can do it the same thing functionally then then yeah that's going to be faster than running the pre-processing so if that's the case then don't spend you know don't spend cycles um don't don't spend time running it if you know it's not gonna you know it's not gonna like don't don't create elaborate data flows of things um and then spend a lot of time running them if they aren't going to you know do anything right so um you know, just yeah, that's, uh, I think that will only be the case for image classification because there are a lot of images in image classification. For other uh, computer vision stuff, I think the data flow stuff will work. Okay, that's good. That's good. I'm just yeah, I'm just saying. So if if it is taking a lot of time, then let's not um, let's not mess mess with it. So and didn't we come up with something last week uh, for a way that we could do this if we wanted to PyTorch, right? something with PyTorch, I think we had a link. Yeah, 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 we talked about uh, uh, transfer learning and stuff. Yeah, okay. So, okay, so CNN models. I remember we had one that was going to be, yeah. Uh, we might want to implement a pi torch. Uh, can, uh, I think we can also check uh, TensorFlow Hub ones because they also have all the CNN and all the pre-trained models for images. Yeah, I was taking a look at ten TensorFlow before. Yeah, uh, TensorFlow I'll... Hub. Uh, oh, not okay. TensorFlow. TensorFlow Hub. I'll take a look at uh, the CNN stuff uh, in, over the weekend and see what uh, what is best. Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. So, oops. All right. Um, let's see. Okay, um, and then what else? So what else do you got going on here? Yeah, that's it from my side. Okay, let's see. What did you have? Uh, okay. Also, like, uh, I wanted to ask, like, the tests were failing for the uh, image config loader thing. Oh, yeah, I think. Is it, is it because of the name change? Yeah, it's because of the name change. Um, let's see. Thank you. I forgot about that. Uh. uh oh. Uh, nope. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Sweet. Um, now we should be good on that. So let's see. Did it already fail though? Yeah. Okay. We just failed again. So let's see. Maybe we can. I'll merge some pull requests this morning, and hopefully we can we can not be failing again. Okay. So. Um, oh, okay. And there's your pull request for that. Okay. So. 
Okay, so that's all on your side, right? Oh uh, yes. Okay, let's see. Um, operations renamed config. All right. All right, Himachu. Uh, yeah, we have two PRs. And that's it. All right, let's see. So there, is, there is one test and that's failing and it's not failing locally on my system. So. For this one? Ah, uh, yeah, there is one test in this. All right. All right, okay, this one I'm going to have to review offline, too. Uh, let's see. And it's not failing locally. All right, okay. Oh, no such file or directory. Maybe you forgot to add this file? Uh, let's see, maybe not though, so let's see. Okay. Uh, nope, there it is. Yeah, it's working on my system, I tried. Samples train data. I think it might be because this should be a single. Yeah. I think that might be the issue here. Or, well, that's not going to be the issue and why it's not there. Um, but let's see. I mean, that's append, and we don't want to append. Um, let's see. Oh, I don't want to view that, damn it. Okay. Um, okay, and then, okay, so let's use... Um, oh, where did I show that? Oh, okay. And this would be oh, okay. All right. Um, so let's see. Why? 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 That's really weird. Um, examples. NLP. Was it train data or test data? But it's failing on. I think it was train data, right? Yeah. What? That's bullshit. Um, all 
Operations NLP, test run. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Um, here we go. We should be using um, uh, so let's do this um, where's a good example so this whole thing um, let's use let's, let's make sure pass Parents. Oh, another thing is, another thing is, uh, this whole thing is in examples. Uh, I'm taking this train data dot sh from examples that is in the root. Yeah. Okay. So. So. so this wasn't working, I guess. Let's see. So if we went here and said. So import path lab. So check this out. I'm gonna make this a little bigger here. All right. So we'll import path lab and print path labs. Come on, really? Give me a list. Right. So, let's see. Operations test. Uh, wait a minute. What did we just do here? Oh. Path lib parents okay so it looks like it's doing a relative a relative path but so if you do um, and maybe we should do it as all right so yeah so if we do um, cat. so if we've got this if we do path lib path file and so this is the path the, the path lib path object to this file Right, and this file is this test file within this directory, and we say, well, resolve resolve is going to make it so that no matter where we come from, it's going to be top level, right? So and then we say parents, and we're going to get this list of things that are all the parents to this file, all the parent directories to this file. So we want to go up, like this is the zeroth index, first, second, third. Um, so what we want is, um, oops, we want the third index here. Um, oops. The third index is going to be three levels up, um, and that's going to be the root here, DFFML, right? Um, and then we can say our examples. Um, so it might be more helpful to do it like this too. We can say I've been I've been doing this where I say root equals that, and then root slash examples slash NLP slash. Um, I think the reason why it's also misleading is that in the test is I've noticed it creates a directory called DFFML and then our repo is cloned within it as DFFML. So if you ever see a stack trace, it's from if you ever see a stack trace in the CI logs. 
in the main library, it's dffml slash dffml slash dffml, um, which is, you know, less than obvious. Um, so this would be your your file, right? It's examples nlp train data dot sh. So um, this is what you want here. Um, oops. And then and then you're gonna want to do a, a stir around that. Um, so. How's it going, Sudanshu? Yeah. All right. So, let's see. So that'll probably yeah. give you what you want and fix the CI test here. Okay. Um, yeah. so let's see. Uh, well, I've pretty much like looked at it now, so I might as well look at it. So was there a reason why you went with creating the definitions? Uh, yeah, it was more clear and things. more clear. Yeah. But okay. Otherwise, it's yeah. Okay. Let's see. And then, do we need this data flow in the? Do we need that data flow there, or can we generate it with the create command? Yeah, I, I added the create command, but uh, I was using it in the test, so. Okay. okay maybe, maybe we can uh, generate that too randomly, uh, like uh, on the fly. Yeah, so instead of, okay, yeah, because it looks like you have this create data flow, and then are you using this anywhere? If you're using it, so yeah, you're using it within the rest of these, right? And then you're using it within the diagram command. Um, but yeah so you never like you know you're not like including that directory or that directly in the docs so i think i think we can get rid of that um let's see yeah i think i think you'll you'll probably want to run the create command and uh yeah so you, you you run that run that create command instead of leaving that that around because then you know in case things change then we're just regenerating the data flow. Um, yeah. Cool. Great. Uh, nice. All right. Okay. Um, regenerate data flow. Um, relative file pass. Gener eight data flow. Um, and, uh, and test instead of leaving the animal file around. Okay, so, um, let's see one second. All right, is there anything? Um, let's see. So then you also have this fix yay for uh, transformers. Um, great, and I assume this is probably failing because the operations were failing. Um, let's see. Uh, should I? It's probably npm audit. Config loader image. Okay, so it's probably just npm audit. Um, let's see. Okay, great. Very nice. Thank you for fixing this. Yeah. Uh,
Sweet. Okay. Um, let me make a note of that too. So, transformers. All right, great. So, let's see. Is there anything else from you, Hamashu? Uh, no, that's it. I'll All be right. adding uh, more operations, and I'll be working on that this week. Great. All right. So, Sudhanshu, what have you been up to? How's it been? Yeah, so uh, actually I was working on the uh, accuracy plugin. Oh, nice. Uh, so, uh, I've actually uh, made some changes, but I haven't like pushed it because uh, I thought like maybe I'm doing it completely wrong. <laughs> so Well, let's, yeah, let's, let's check in then. Uh, yeah, so I will be like, can I share my screen? Or something? Yeah, yeah. Yes, so uh, so this is the uh, accuracy thing that I've created under the DFFML. Yep, looks good. I a new folder and an accuracy part because there was already an accuracy, so I yep. thought maybe I should create it under. Folder. Yep, no, this so is like perfect. This is the, yeah, so this is the uh, code that I've written so far. Mm -hmm. So I've created a, uh, an accuracy config. And I don't know what to do here, so I've just passed it. Yeah, at this point, I well, this is a base class, so it's not going to have anything in there, really. So that's fine. OK, so uh, yeah, so here's the accuracy context. So here, like, I, there's just this abstract method, mm -hmm. score, which will take the uh, record, the prediction records, which we get from the uh, models uh -huh. method. And this is the uh, prediction features, which will be the list of features on which we did the prediction. Okay. So I have made it abstract. So like we will have to implement it like yep. where we are using these. Nice, nice. And and then this base entry point I have added. Yep, this looks right. Yeah, this looks right. Um, so I think the one thing was, did we have, did we, let me look at the notes again and see what we were doing here. So, um, 732. 732, thank you. Okay. Where did it go? Sorry, wait, which? Let's see. Where did we find? Uh, sorry, I'm still I'm still lost here. Um, it's actually one of the pinned issues on the. Oh, end. it's one of the pinned issues. Oh yes, okay, yeah. great, thank you. Oh, yep, right in the middle. <clears throat> Duh. Okay. All right, so. Okay. Hmm. All right, okay, I'm just trying to think. All right, so we have accuracy, and we have, let's see, let me see that code again. Okay, so yeah, you have, you have accuracy, and you have accuracy context. Okay, great. Okay, because I was thinking, I, I remember we had some hesitation on whether we were going to do the double context entry, but I think that I think that time has shown that it's uh, it's always a safe option because um, we can always we can always do like what we did with simple model and, and make it so that that's not required. Um, Okay, so yes, and then base entry point, DFML accuracy, accuracy, perfect. Um, yeah, that's this is all correct. 
Um, and then the next thing, I guess the next, yeah, sort of the next thing is just you implement the first one, right? Um, and then we start figuring out how, how we want to, how we want to, we probably want a high level method to, for this. Um, well, we have the high level accuracy method, so we're going to modify the high level accuracy method. Let me write these in the notes. Um, yes. so let's see. So, and actually let me write it in this. So. Modify the high. Okay, let me edit the. Um, so. Oh, uh, is this? This is. Let's see. Is it, is there anything else you wanted to show right now? Uh, yeah. Like one one more thing I okay. had to ask is, like, uh, where are we getting the ground truth here? Yeah. Like, okay. The prediction. So are we like expecting like this will also have the ground truth as well as the predicted output? Yeah, let's see. So, okay, so it looks like we had decided that the first is going to be the output of the predict method, which is of a model. So, which is an async iterator of uh, of records. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, those will have in the the model the whatever it predicted will be um, um, in. It'll be in the uh, predictions, let's see, so you know the, the record dot predict, um, it'll be in the records prediction data, right? Um, so until, yes. yeah, so it'll be, and then that list of features is just the, the ones that we're gonna grab out of there, right? Um, and since these are records that should be, should have test data, it, they're, that, that information should also be in their, um, that information should also be in their features. Um, so let's see. Let me let me sort of. Uh, I wonder. Let's see. What's the best way to show this? Um, so. Um, yeah. So within. Okay. So. So within the accuracy method, we're now going to like within the accuracy. Um, high level function uh you want to jump over there for a second yes. all right so and then check out accuracy here okay. uh, i think it's yeah, below it's yeah okay here we go so yeah so it takes a model and then it takes yeah the the you know records or sources. So the next, it's going to now take a model and then an accuracy plugin, right? Um, and so the the modified version of this is it's a it it's it's a weight accuracy open parens model comma accuracy plugin, right? And then the things that then the uh, you know the records here with the sources or whatever, right? Yes. And then, so what we're going to do is we're going to use, just like we're here with here, right? We, we do this, we do async with sources as sources, model as model, and then, you know, uh, you know, accuracy plugin as accuracy plugin. Um, and then we do, you know, async with sources as SCTX, model as MCTX, comma, accuracy plugin as ACTX and then we'll do ACTX dot score and then we will pass um, so uh, let's see yeah I believe the method you did was score right we have the score method yes okay so to score we pass um, let's see prediction features okay so um, let's see I wonder what the best way to do this is because the model contains the features that are going to be predicted on um, so um, yeah right now that's that's localized to the model um, let's see um, let's see let's see yeah, you guys, you guys see what I'm saying, right? Because right now the model is the only thing that knows what it's supposed to predict, um, because it's within the config. Um, yes. And so, um, 
Let's see. Whereas now accuracy needs to know what it is too. Um, hmm. How best to do this? Um, yeah, this is why models originally took the features. Um, let's see, let's see. So, hmm. Yeah, okay, so I'm trying to think about this from the perspective of, like, what if we had, um, you know, I, I always try to bring this back to, like, you know, when we, when we finally create whatever the, what the web UI is in front of this, like, how does it make sense to configure all these things and wire all of this up, right? Um, because that sort of leads, that can, that can help us help us make our design decisions here, right? Um, so... In that case, the re like the reason why having everything in configs is nice is because well you know we can we know the data types and we can export the data types and we know what the what the uh, you know what the what the field help is for all of them and um, and we can configure them at the time we instantiate the object before we enter the context um, and now so now we have this situation where we need to know um, what are the features that we're doing prediction on um, what are the features that we're doing prediction on for this model to do accuracy scoring um, and so perhaps it's best that the model implement um, some sort of abstract base like the model implement a a method that returns which features it's predicting, right? Um, because that would then tell us, because the model's going to get it in the config, the accuracy score. Um, so, cause, cause, so every model could define a different config, right? And, and the name of what you're predicting could be something other than predict, right? So we could have a method which basically, you know, says if the config dictionary has a you know predict um, if the config dictionary has a predict um, has a has a predict property then we return that otherwise we raise not implemented error or something um, because that way if someone doesn't have a predict property within their within their model config um, then they need to tell us what their model you know what well, you know they wrote they wrote the config object and they named it something other than predict so they need to now predict or well I guess pred predict is already a method obviously um, they need whatever this thing is um, you know predicting or something um, to return what are the features that they're predicting um, to so that the name is standardized um, because this, yeah, this would let us basically say that when we go to do accuracy, uh, we take we take a model that's configured and we take an accuracy scoring an accuracy score that's configured, um, and to use the accuracy score, we have to you know we're just basically going to take the output of um, um, we're going to take the output of record with features. Um, or sources, we're going to do sources with features, we're going to pass that to the, or, uh, wait, no, we just changed that. So, let's see. Uh, things are no longer localized to the model, and this is causing problems. Um, does anybody have any ideas on this? We need a way to keep this clean. Um, so let's see. I mean, okay. You know, okay, so... Yeah, I mean, okay, so the core problem here is that now that accuracy is no longer in the model... Okay, well, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. We could just take this thing and pass it to the accuracy method of the model. 
and then then the model just uses this accuracy scoring plugin because it knows what features it has and it knows what um, yeah okay here we go this is this works this works okay so we modify the accuracy method of the model so that it takes this accuracy scoring context um, so like so sources we take basically we modify the the signature of that method so that it's self sources accuracy scorer and then we're in the model so we have all the information we need about the feature names and what we're predicting and um, we can pass the async iterator um, and we can implement we can now implement accuracy as uh, we can basically we can make accuracy no longer an abstract method and we can just do a default of you know if there's features if there's a features property in the config and if there's a predict property in the config then we know what to do here um, and if not then um, then uh, then we raise not implemented error so the body of accuracy is now going to be so the body so basically we, yeah we remove the abstract method declaration from models accuracy method and we implement a default one which says um, which says uh, you know run predict right and use feed the output of predict to this accuracy score right so basically we're just going to call call predict and pass that as the first argument to this the to the score method right because predict returns this async iterator so yes yeah and so predict returns this async iterator so we call from within accuracy we call the accuracy plugin dot score we pass the first argument is the predict you know with the sources that we were passed in for accuracy and then the second argument is the features that we're predicting right and since we're in the model yes. we know that you know by def our default one is going to be config.predict if there's no you know we can do a if not has at her self.config you know and then in quotes predict and then we can say raise not implemented error right um yes. otherwise I think I think we're good there. Then does that sound sound to everyone? Yeah. So uh, we are going to change this method, right? Yeah. And uh, the accuracy one is going to actually call the uh, the accuracy plugin which we are making. Yes. And it's going to take the uh, async iterator uh, from the predict method. Yep. That record. Okay. Yeah. Now I get. It. Sweet. All right. I'm glad we figured that out. That was yeah. We had the wrong plan there. So. All right, so change. So let me, and I'm going to make the notes in here real quick, and then we can. Okay, so we're going to change accuracy method of models to no longer be an abstract base base method. Um, uh, let's see, or abstract method. Um, um we'll make it so that it takes a second parameter um the accuracy score plugin score so accuracy context there i'm uh, i'm writing I should share so because I know when I I know I write notes and I talk and I probably don't uh, I'm probably not do the best job of that so okay so um, all right so we're going to change the accuracy method method of model to no longer be an abstract method we'll make it so that it takes a second parameter the accuracy score which is of type accuracy context um, um, of type accuracy context um, the uh, this uh, method within model context the accuracy method within model context will um, um, return let's see well the uh, 
I mean, this is it's gonna it's gonna do a yeah it's gonna return um, the uh, return a call to accuracy score dot score where we pass self dot predict um, sources and then self dot config dot predict um, Um, uh, oh, and then we need to say, uh, check if, um, self.config.predict exists using has utter, uh, if not, raise not implemented error. All right. Um, to take, so then we need to modify the high level accuracy function to take accuracy score as the second argument after model. Um, okay. And then we still need to All right. I think this is. Uh, I think this captures what we were doing here. Is this? Does this seem to accurately capture what we just talked about? Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, sweet. Actually, if I can, uh, found that we. Uh, we needed to modify our assumptions about work uh, updated. Great. Good stuff. Great stuff. All right. Sweet. Okay. Is there anything else you want to talk about, Sudhantru? No, that's it. Thank uh, you. All right, thank you. Sweet. Okay, all right, great job, guys. Great stuff. Okay, um, and then I owe I owe tutorial reviews. Um, let's see. Not sure. Uh, um, let's see. NLP operation. Flow tutorials. All right. Well, thank you all. And uh, does anybody have anything else, or are we good? Yeah, nothing from my side. All right. Well, thanks everybody, and I hope you all have a great weekend. And uh, I hope that new puppy doesn't chew everything up. And I hope it's super fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, have a good one, everyone. Thanks, guys. Uh, thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.